And a good midday to you on this Monday. This weather video, a Velco Weather Hazards Outlook video, is driven by 802cars.com. Represents 802 Toyota Twin City Subaru, 802 Honda, and it's all located off of Exit 7 on Interstate 89. Looking at the big picture, one thing to note is this time of year, as we get darker, uh, shorter, shorter days, notice the darkness up here in about central Hudson Bay and then points north. And that's part of the uh, Arctic winter on the way. Okay, quickly, here's the setup. You can see this uh, kink in the uh, 500 hectopascal flow. This is a negative tilt trough uh, kind of being kicked out of this uh, mean, tr with this mean trough uh, extending from uh, really Hudson Bay into the Ohio Valley. And uh, this is a, a, a nor'easter that's never really got tremendously involved uh, uh, in terms of intensity, but it is throwing just enough moisture that's going to swing through. And this is uh, here the problem. We're looking at generally light precipitation amounts. And using, uh, looking at the uh, surface uh, area of low pressure, this is not very deep, but deep enough to uh, give us this flow coming in off the ocean and spreading clouds up north and also ahead of this trough, same kind of thing. So uh, marginal temperatures making it a little bit of a tricky situation for travel. And again, uh, this is going to be a situation for uh, utilities to watch, but uh, it does not look like we're going to meet thresholds to... Uh, to worry about too many things going on for utilities at this point in time. Let's take a look at the uh, computer modeling and what's going to happen after the storm moves on out. So there's our area of low pressure off to the south and east of Cape Cod and as this uh, system slides on by you see a little bit of precipitation kind of rolls in and we're looking at that sort of reddish color there that's freezing rain mixed with sleet and a little bit of snow begins to wrap in as temperatures aloft cool just a bit. This is valid by uh, 10 o'clock Tuesday and then that continues to pull on out, and that's the uh, nature of the beast. And we get into a little bit of snow flurry activity on Wednesday. You can see that kind of slide through parts of Vermont there. And then uh, that dries out as an area of higher pressure builds in from uh, the lower Great Lakes. Heads for the middle Atlantic coast, but enough of a ridge of higher pressure uh, that uh, juts northward. And that's going to bring us some pretty fine weather as it looks right now for Thursday. That looks like the best dry project weather, as well as a good solar day. Now that area of higher pressure then pushes on out. Here comes uh, Friday's weather system, which is going to pack a little bit of wind on its backside. So you see it's a little bit of rain shower mixed with uh, some maybe some wet snow showers. Doesn't look like we're going to see uh, the uh, freezing rain aspect or sleet, but uh, some wet snow follows it. And right here the pressure gradient is a little bit on the tighter side. And we're looking at gusts anywhere from 35 to locally 50 miles an hour. This from a westerly wind uh, as that area of low pressure begins to slide out of the region. And uh, those, that pressure gradient works into the uh, period of Friday night before another area of higher pressure builds in. Just enough of a ridge that we're going to see basically conditions, uh, partly sunny skies with good dry project weather as it looks right now on, uh, on Saturday. And here comes the next weather system. This uh, looks like it may have a little bit of uh, mixed precipitation types to it as it's going to slide through. This is going to take place along about Sunday. And then that moves on out and we're looking at another area of higher pressure. So... Uh, weather systems are starting to come in a little bit more frequent now, and uh, as we get toward next weekend, we'll see uh, one just about every other, uh, every two days or so. Here's the HRF model, and this is just a point to uh, watching the uh, precipitation shields advance mostly to our east. Uh, this is, uh, let's see, that would be 2 o'clock, that'd be about 9 o'clock in the evening. That's 10, 11, uh, midnight. You got 1 o'clock there. Uh, two, three, four, five, six, and finally seven o'clock tomorrow morning. Looks like we're mixing with a lot of various types of precip. I would not count on eastern Vermont being all rain. I think it's really going to be more of a freezing rain sleet scenario, so I'm not buying this uh, computer model, but at the same time, it does give you some of the timing as how that all transitions. Okay, let's look at the uh, three-hour QPF of the GFS Ensemble uh, mixed with the Canadian. You can see uh, that the main weather uh, issues here are going to be taking place with this uh, up and coming and then a little bit of uh, flurry activity and then down the road with drier weather Thursday and this is Friday's weather system and so forth. Uh, looking at the total amount of uh, QPF, we're not looking at very much here. Uh, this is going to be under four-tenths of an inch for this total amount for this first system. And then you're looking at probably another three-tenths of an inch. So both of these systems down the road appear to be not really a big deal. 
but precipitation types will definitely be uh, a deal here. So we're looking at rain with mixed precip with the purple, a little bit of snow flurries, and then same kind of thing, maybe a little bit more in the way of the rain department for temperatures above normal at that point in time on Friday. Now uh, let's take a look at the two meter temperatures. You can see Friday uh, goes above normal here. And uh, comparing these temperatures with the uh, max mins there you're seeing uh, centered on Montpelier, you can also look at the 850 hectopascal temperatures. We go above freezing. This is about 4,000 feet or so. So you're looking at uh, above freezing temperatures. Hence, that's why we're looking at mixed precip. And then a next uh, area of mixed precipitation, then those temperatures generally fall. Last but not least, you're looking at uh, total snow. So here's our first uh, mixed sleet and snow, uh, a little bit over one inch. And then you're looking at down the road here, just a uh, uh, it looks like another inch and a half, two inches, and so forth. Nothing major, and uh, but we are seeing these uh, mixed precipitation types uh, working on in uh, twice, and it looks like uh, that'll be a third time if you go as far out as Sunday. Weather Prediction Center, QPF, seven days for them. Uh, this is where the heavier amounts are going to be off the coast, and you can see we're only down to a quarter of an inch here, about a half inch here, one inch uh, as you get into eastern parts of New England, uh, closer to the coastline. Weighted temperatures over the next five days, the meteorological output statistics show that near neutral temperatures, uh, uh, chances for above or, or below. And then uh, the weighted temperatures uh, cool off uh, considerably as we get into the late part of the week. We get into a little bit of this uh, minus three degrees, uh, so not too far from normal really at this point. And the uh, climate reanalyzer shows uh, a real buildup of warmth uh, in the western half of the country. This is the uh, cold that had made it uh, east and is now modifying considerably. This is the warmth that was ahead of it and uh, you can see quite a difference. Notice the Arctic is back into uh, well above normal temperatures. Cold spots now are in the uh, areas around Siberia on the back side of the planet. And lastly here we have an area that uh, has about a 50% chance of spinning up to a tropical cyclone. This is out, uh, it's not going to bother anybody. The curvature is going to take this track pretty much out in the middle of Atlantic. So nothing to worry about there and no threats to land. Roger Hill, Weathering Heights, thanks for watching.